Songpaeus arminia, commonly known as a Venezuelan sun tiger, is a New World arboreal tarantula first described in 1994 by F. Sager. This tree-dwelling tarantula has a deep black color with bright orange chevrons on the legs and a tiger stripe pattern on the abdomen. This species is indigenous to the area of Venezuela and Guyana, but was also observed in 2016 in Brazil. Unlike most New World tarantulas, this species does not have urticating hairs, but makes up for its lack of defense mechanism by being very fast and agile and having a venom stronger than most New World species. The Venezuelan sun tiger is sexually dimorphic, meaning you can tell the females and males apart by their appearance. Males of this species are smaller than the females and have a grayish brown color instead of the deep black coloration of the mature females. These teas are fast growing and once mature, females are generally around five to six inches while males are usually around four to five inches. Females typically produce only about 50 to 200 eggs per sack, but they are able to double clutch, which means they can drop a second sack after a molt without having to mate again. Even though this species is technically arboreal, meaning that they live above the ground in trees, in captivity, they usually are more semi-arboreal. I keep my spiderlings in an acrylic or clear plastic arboreal spiderling enclosure with more height than width. I fill up the enclosure about one third with substrate and put in a sliver of cork bark, a small stick or a large plastic leaf. I put a small water dish on the floor of the enclosure or super glue it to the side of the enclosure about an inch off the ground. At this size, the sun tiger will spend a lot of time burrowed in the ground or will web up the area where the cork bark and ground meet, making a dirt curtain with substrate or moss and will stay well hidden. I keep this substrate somewhat damp but not swampy or oversaturated. As they grow into juveniles, usually over two and two and a half inches, I move them into an acrylic juvenile arboreal enclosure with more height than width. I glue a piece of vertical cork bark to the side of the enclosure or just lean it in at an angle and provide about two and a half to three inches of substrate. Again, I provide a water dish at ground level or glue it to the side of the enclosure just off the ground. I don't put it too high in the enclosure because this tea will spend a lot of time near the bottom. And I usually don't put it right on the ground as it will most likely get webbed over constantly. I overflow the water dish so the substrate retains a little moisture, but avoid overdoing it as it could lead to a stuffy environment and cause mold growth. I provide plenty of side ventilation and put sphagnum moss or broken up leaf litter on the ground so the tea can use this in building its dirt curtains. And for adults, I keep mine in the Exoterra Nano Tall or Nano Small enclosures and give them about three to four inches of substrate, a hollow cork bark, and a few branches leaned against the side of the enclosure with fake plants hanging down. I try to give this tarantula plenty of places to hide in hopes it will spend more time outside of its burrow. As far as feeding, I give my spiderlings flightless fruit flies or small roaches or crickets till they're over a half an inch. And then I just drop in a small cricket twice a week until they're in pre-molt and wait about three to four days after a molt before I try to feed them again. Juveniles over two and a half inches, I feed two to three medium crickets every five to seven days, depending on the size of the abdomen and avoid feeding them any prey larger than the tarantula. And for adults, I feed six to 10 large crickets every seven to 10 days and occasionally switch it up with mealworms. I avoid feeding the adults for about 10 to 14 days after a molt to give their fangs plenty of time to harden up. Of all the teas in this genus, the Arminia is the most defensive in my experience. They are very fast and will teleport from one side of the enclosure to the other before I can even react. 
That coupled with the fact that their venom is stronger than almost every other New World, this isn't the best beginner tarantula, but makes an excellent species for anyone with some experience with New World tarantulas to begin to make their transition to keeping Old World tarantulas. I find that if you provide ample places for your sun tiger to hide and feel secure, they are more likely to retreat out of sight than to give you a threat pose. And I usually tap on the glass a few times before opening their enclosure to give them time to retreat and hide, as opposed to just opening it up and startling them. Reports online state that their venom has reactions like vomiting, sweating, lightheadedness, and muscle spasms that last for a couple of days. Again, a bite is something you really don't have to worry about if you have a proper setup, you warn the tarantula before you cross into its space, and you use tongs to drop in feeders or remove the water dish. As long as you are mindful and respect the tea's space, there is little to no chance of a bite. This tea can be very secretive, spending weeks in hiding and only venturing out late into the night. Now that makes it even more amazing when you catch this species out and about on full display. There are very few tarantulas that are as beautiful and have such a cool color combination as this one. So it's no wonder why it's such a popular species in the hobby. Now this species was requested multiple times by a lot of you in the comments of previous videos. So I'm glad I was able to get that taken care of for you. And if you've got a species you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, please leave those suggestions down below in the comments. I'm gonna put them on a list and get to them as soon as I can. And if you wanna see more species specific videos and videos on all things related to the tarantula hobby, go ahead and join the collective by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I upload a new video. Now I upload a new video every Tuesday, but I'm coming up with some additional content that I think is gonna start getting released on a Saturday. So if you don't wanna miss any of those videos, make sure you're subscribed. If you think I did my job well, go ahead and hit that like button. It means a lot to me and it helps future keepers find this content further on down the line. Now, one of the downsides to the PRminia is the fact that it spends 95% of its time hidden. I have mine set up in this large, beautiful arboreal enclosure and it spends most of its time right down there at the ground in its little burrow that it made. But when it does come out, it is amazing. So it's totally worth the wait. Now I set mine up with a cork bark and some driftwood and hanging plants, giving it plenty of places to hide, but it chose to make this web tunnel right at the base of those branches. Now it webbed up the ground extensively, so anytime I draw prey down in there, it dashes out very quickly, snatches up that prey, but usually immediately returns right to its burrow. Now the nights I'm having a hard time sleeping and I come downstairs at two or three o'clock in the morning to check on the tarantulas, I almost always find this one out and about. And that's usually the only chance I get to take pictures of it. Now, I wasn't trying to scare anyone away talking about the venom associated with this tarantula. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that it is a little bit more potent than our basic new world. But again, if you have plenty of places for it to hide and you let it know before you open up the enclosure, you're really at no risk of getting bit. They're so fast and defensive, I wouldn't suggest handling them. But they truly are a beautiful tarantula and a lot of people give them away as freebies when you place orders with breeders online. In fact, while I was filming this, like right now, I found out that Fear Not Tarantulas had revealed the species of their mystery spiders. And apparently one of those species was the Venezuelan sun tiger. So congratulations to you all and I hope you found this video helpful. And if you want to get 10% off all your purchases of Fear Not Tarantulas, all you need to do is join my Facebook group and send a moderator a message that'll hook you up with that code. You can also pick up some cool merchandise and all things tarantula Collective related from my website, the tarantulacollective.com. And I also set up an Amazon store. So if you're curious about anything that I use down here with my collection, I have all of the enclosures, books, tools, everything that I use, even the shirt I'm wearing right now is all available for sale through my Amazon store. And a small fraction of everything that's purchased through the store does come back to help support this channel. So I appreciate that. If you want to stay connected with me between these videos, you can join me on Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, or Patreon. Well, thank you all for watching. It's been a lot of fun. On hanging out with you. I appreciate all your support and keep an eye out for that bonus content that will be coming out on the weekends. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support this channel and feel free to share these videos with your friends. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me and I will see you next Tuesday.